Hi and welcome to the video. In this video I'm just going to talk about a scam that's been quite prevalent for the last sort of two years or so um, but I'm seeing quite a lot of contact on it recently so I'll sort of make a video uh, to try and help put you at ease. So I've got an example of the sort of email you might have received here um, and it's basically an email that contains my password in it um, and it's essentially blackmailing me into sending some Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency Otherwise, they're going to send something to my contacts. Uh, this one is actually fairly polite and um, a lot of them are a lot more lewd. Um, but ultimately, it's a blackmail email. But it's got my password to add some legitimacy. Now, the first thing you need to know is you don't need to worry. Um, the data they've got in here, they might use your real name. I haven't got that in this one, but they might have your real name as well. Again, it's a um, surprisingly common uh, and easily easily obtainable data so don't panic basically uh, the one thing you do need to know is that if that password is in use anywhere go and change it immediately but how do they get this data and how have they sent you this email well so what they've done is they've got some data that would have been obtained in a third party data breach so this would be when uh, someone's hacked a website and taken usernames and email address email addresses and passwords of all the users uh, you see them on the news quite often there's nothing you can do to stop it and that's the responsibility of uh, those website owners but ultimately your data might have been breached so this website, have I been pwned, owned, pawned, however you want to say that word. Um, it's quite a geeky one. Uh, don't worry if you've never heard of it. It's not really important. But if you type in your email address here, you'll probably find that your email address has been used in a data breach. So here we go. I've got I've been breached in three data breaches and it's got the dates there, which is important too. So essentially, my username and password was breached in was was involved in a data breach. So now my username and password is now available to anyone who knows where to find it. Um, there are websites that have them just available for anyone to look at. So there we go. They've got my email address and password, which is all that was involved in that spam email. They might have used your real name as well. Again, might have been included in the data dump. Um, so really not that sophisticated at all. So you don't need to panic. One thing it does raise, though, is a bit of security. So I will just talk about best practices for passwords as it seems quite relevant at this point in time. But so let's have a look at what we've got. So first things first, use two factor authentication where possible. So even if your password does get breached, as I'm really mad at because they can't actually access your account, obviously still change your password. But two-factor authentication adds that extra layer of security, meaning even with your password, they can't breach your other accounts. Don't use re don't reuse passwords for multiple accounts for the same sort of reason. If you're involved in a data breach on one website, now they've if you've reused your password, now they've got your username and password for lots of other websites. So we'll talk about using a password manager to sort of prevent this. Um, we're human at the end of the day. We can't remember millions of passwords password managers will help with that and I'll talk about that a bit later so use strong and long passwords so use all the characters available and try and make it long lowercase uppercase numbers and special characters most places force you to do this now anyway so uh, personally I'm a lot of fan of longer passwords that are easy to remember rather than random letters and symbols which let's be honest you're never going to remember them so I quite like to use random words with no relevance to me and that's important because you don't want people to guess if I just used my name my email my uh, my password my, my password my name uh, like my daughter's school for example all those sorts of things people might end up guessing it so try and use something quite random so something like poseidon thermal ashgrove drill bit with sort of special characters or numbers in between that's a really good password it's really long really easy to remember but very secure very hard to crack and when we talk about strong passwords, I'll tell you why, because um, no one ever really seems to know, uh, which is understandable. If you get your password, if you get your account um, dumped like in, in a data breach, like I sort of previously talked about, they often say, oh, your password, your hashed password was compromised. So what that means is 
your password hash has been compromised. What a what someone can do with that password hash is use a powerful computer to run thousands and thousands and thousands of passwords a second against that hash. If they the passwords match, so if the two match, they they'll unhash your password and they'll be able to then use it. Um, so when we say use strong passwords, that's why because it makes it harder to brute force that password. So if you use something like uh, password one for example and i've got it here as well use passwords that aren't easy to guess so password with two fives and exclamation mark uses characters capitals and everything but if if it gets if um one of these bots gets at it it's going to be comp it's going to be unguessed in seconds um so yeah same goes for something like sequential passwords so don't lose something like one q two w3 e 4 r these bots are going to try those sorts of ones first um so although it looks nice and secure it really isn't um so that's why next up don't use plain don't store your passwords in plain text um it's going to depend on how you do it if you store them in plain text in a super secure vault then that's probably okay if you store them in a notebook next to your computer yeah that's not okay um if someone breaks into your house they've got access to all your accounts change your passwords on a fairly regular basis now there's an element of um of this that's important to note is that this only works if you don't just use password one and then change it to password two then change it to password three for example when you change a password you need to change it completely um so when i say fairly regular basis that's up to you but obviously if you get compromised in a data breach then the more regularly you change your password the more protected you are because the password they breached is no longer relevant because you've changed it all of this is a bit much passwords are a nightmare we're only human so a common thing to do now is use something called a password manager to just alleviate a little bit of this stress so what happens in those is you store your usernames and passwords in this manager and the manager so it stores that data in an encrypted file and then when you use your password to access the manager it unencrypts the file that one then you only have to ever remember one really strong password to access all your passwords so you can use whatever you want for those passwords stored within there and most password managers will give you a generate you a nice strong password every time you need one for a new account so basically make sure the one password you use for those password managers is really secure like i said earlier something like don't use beside or thermal ash grove or drill bit now just because um it, it might be a bit obvious but something along those sorts of lines is a really good one to to use because you'll remember it and you'll use it regularly so you'll remember it um and it's very secure so something there's there's so many password managers um personally i use this one here called keypass um i like it just because it's lightweight but there are loads uh, last pass is a really common one um you'll find one that suits you but try and make sure it's reputable and um, before you download it um, there, there are there are lots um so kind of you can find one that fits your needs and that's really all there is to it thank you very much for watching Goodbye for now.